Hi, this is Carly Morgan from Magical Day Weddings, and I'm going to do a tutorial to show you how to make a stamped necklace like this one. I wear this necklace all the time. Um, it features my husband's name and the name of our daughter, and I made it last year right around this time because I got into jewelry stamping so that I could do Christmas presents, and it's nice because these sort of necklaces are um, a really great Christmas gift, but they're not actually that difficult or expensive to make once you have the supplies and you know what you're doing. So to get started, the first things that you're going to need, uh, you're going to need a letter stamp set and a bench block, a jewelry hammer, some sheet metal to practice on, um, stamping blanks, which are the little circles like um, these circles, these used to be stamping blanks, and um, a permanent black marker like a sharpie, um, some jewelry polishing pads, a hole punch plier, and then jump rings and a chain so that you can make it into a necklace. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my bench block, which is right here. The bench block is what gives um, the hammer some resistance, so it's what you actually hammer onto. And before I start making the necklace, I'm going to take out a piece of sheet metal, this one's copper, and I'm going to practice stamping on the sheet metal so that I get a feel for how much resistance and how exactly I should hit the stamp. Um, that's really the trickiest thing about this is the uh, letter placement and then making sure that you get a nice solid hit with the hammer. So this is random but this is the letter um, B. And, yeah, there you go. And you just try to line it up as much as you can. I love these stamps because they have um, four corners so you can kind of tell, you know, if you keep a solid line across, you can sort of tell where the letters are. Although one of the nice charming things about these kind of necklaces is that sometimes the letters are askew and it kind of gives it a nice handmade feel. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to put that down and then I'm going to do three solid hits with my hammer. And you can see, oh actually it was a D, whatever. You can see it came up nicely in the copper. It doesn't have any extra marks and it's pretty even. Um, it's light, but that's because if I'm going to be doing it on a necklace, I'm actually going to fill it in with a sharpie. So that's why it's not as dark as maybe you'd think it should be. Um, I don't do that that well all the time. And I have this necklace to show you a couple of mistakes that I've made. Um, this one was actually for somebody else and you can see here those little scratches that was because I wasn't hitting the silver hard enough and so it just kind of scuffed the metal instead of making that deep circle um, on Mickey's other area you can see that I didn't hit consistently so part of the circle is missing which is why you really want to make sure that you just hit the whole stamp and you know there's some other little mistakes um, on some of these like I don't know if you can see it very well in the video but on this eye if you can kind of see it. There's a little scratch mark right above the eye. You can sort of see it as I move it in the light. It's light because I didn't um, fill it in with Sharpie, but it is there, and that's because I hit the stamp at an angle and it caught this um, edge right here. Wait for the video to focus in. It caught that edge, and so I got a little bit of a half circle above the eye. Um, I'll show it to you again. Do, do, do. Maybe I'll show it to you. There it is. That eye on the bottom. Sorry, it's funny to be doing this with the camera. Okay, and then this other one. So I wanted to do the, you know, the famous monorail greeting, and I ran out of space. So that's just a good reminder for me that you need to make sure that you have enough space to type out what it is that you want to stand out before you spend all that time doing it letter by letter. And you can see. These are kind of uneven, but again, I kind of think that that gives it a little bit of charm. Okay, so my practice letter looks good, so I'm ready to move on. Um, to make this necklace, we have um, three different blanks and three different sizes, and I will add links to the tutorial um, so that you can see exactly the sizes that I used here. But basically you just need three sizes that are about a half an inch apart and that's going to give you a good amount of space to have letters but it's not going to leave you with a really giant um, necklace. So I think I'm going to start with, 
Let's start with the Mickey. So I have my teeny tiny circle. That's what I'm going to be stamping on. And to make the Mickey, I don't have a Mickey stamp. I don't know if they make one. I've never seen one. So what I did is I bought this set of stamps that were circles in three different sizes. And using these circles, I've actually been able to make Mickeys in different sizes. Are you going to focus? Or are you not going to focus? Focus. Come on. No? Really? Maybe if I move this out of the way. There we go. Um, so these two are the body and ears for a small Mickey. And then these two are the body and ears for a, or the head and ears, I guess, for the large Mickey. Oh, and I don't think I mentioned, the reason that I'm doing this on cardboard is because we have a pretty nice table and the edges of this block scratched it the first time that I went to do the jewelry stamping thing. So now I just use the cardboard to make sure the table doesn't get scuffed. So if you have a work table, you don't have to have it on cardboard. That's not, that doesn't have anything to do with the actual jewelry making. It's just because there's a big old scratch to remind me that I need to pay more attention to what I'm doing. So for this teeny tiny circle, I'm going to use the teeny tiny circles stamps and make a teeny tiny Mickey. Okay. And you don't want to actually put the Mickey right in the middle because what you have to remember is that you are going to need to leave space for um, that hole up there and the jump ring and all of that. So you actually want the Mickey to be a little bit lower on the circle. And it's kind of tricky, so I would warn you, you know, you want to make sure that you have some extra blanks laying around the first couple of times because if you don't get it in just the right spot, you're sort of stuck with this off-center necklace forever. Okay, so that looks good to me. So I'm going to do three quick hits, holding that as steady as I can. There we go. You can sort of see the circle right there. And now for ears, you just have to line it up as much as you can. And you can sort of see the reflection of the stamp in the copper, which makes it a lot easier to um, figure out exactly how to line that up so that it's touching that head circle, but it's not going through it like a figure eight. Oops, see I stamped that one a little bit harder, that's why it got stuck. It looks okay, but that could have, um, if I'd stamped it much harder, it could have bent the circle and it would have looked kind of crummy. So you got to watch that too. Aren't you guys uh, happy that you're getting a tutorial from someone like me instead of a professional? So you can watch me mess up. Uh, oh, let's see. I think this one's fine. It's still kind of charming, but you can see I didn't space that one as well. And, um, come here. And... If it's ever going to focus. Come on, camera. There we go. You can see that that ear is sort of escaping the rest of Mickey's head. Again, I don't think it's bad enough that I need to redo it. It just kind of looks charming and handmade. But um, if you were really being a perfectionist and you wanted it to look um, better than that, then you'd probably just take a little bit more time to look at the spacing. I was rushing, so I didn't do that. Okay, so that one's done. Um, it's not dark, it's not as dark as you'd think it should be, but that's because we're going to color it in after I'm finished stamping the others. So, we had a winner for this tutorial. Pebbles won, and the names that she wanted to use were Matt and Lacey. So we're going to do the next size circle, and that name is going to be Matt. Now this circle, it's silver colored, but I think it's actually nickel plated. Um, if I can remember. The silver and the nickel plated look really similar and I've got both so I'm not positive that that's what it is but I think that it's nickel plated. And as a side note I have an allergy to nickel jewelry um, as a lot of people do. Nickel tends to irritate the skin but the way that this necklace is set up it's the copper um, the copper in this set it's actually going to be touching my skin the nickel's totally insulated so even though um, pebbles might be the one that's wearing it and she could have a nickel allergy I'm not going to worry about that because this shouldn't be touching her skin okay so Matt oh I didn't show you guys my letters so these are my letter stamps Ta -da! and they're just lowercase 
you know, typewriter type letters. I really like them. And this is the, I'll flip this off so that you can see. Oh, no, never mind. It's very stuck. Okay, so it's the Economy Block Lowercase 332nd inch 2.5 millimeter um, stamp set. And I think that this is one of the more popular ones that Beeducation sells, and that's where I got my supplies. So it was the first one that I started out with, and it's the one that I use most of the time. I have another set, but those letters are much bigger and they're not as attractive. So I just use these ones. So I am going to pull out the M, the A, and the T. If I can find it. There we go. Alright. M A T. You gonna focus? Yep, M A T. And to stamp names out is it's not much different than doing the Mickey. It's still all about lining it up carefully. Um, you want to make sure that you're not too close to the edge just because your letters could fall off or it could, the pressure could sort of distort the edge of the circle if you're too close and then it gets kind of wavy and weird looking. Um, I love stamping on silver even more than copper because you can see it's almost a mirror image and I can see exactly where my letter's going to go down. So in my head I'm thinking, okay, if the hole's right there and then we've got this circle, I want this to be as close to the edge as possible without going off the edge. And I also don't want it to be, you know, right here. We want it to be right there so that it's underneath the Mickey. So I think, I think that looks about good. And I'm going to hit this a little bit harder because this tends to be a little bit harder than the copper. And that looks good. Okay, so now we're going to do the A. The G. Oh, that wasn't the A, that was the G. Did anybody else catch that while I was showing that to you? Horrified, horrified onlookers wondering what I was doing with the G. Okay. Do do do. See how that A ended up? Not really keen on that. I wasn't really paying attention. And because that doesn't take up very much space, I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm going to start again down here and just put the hole punch up there so you don't even see that. That is a real benefit to working with stacked necklaces because as long as you don't screw up too much, you can kind of get a redo there. Okay, so I'm going to start again. Okay, well, still not crazy about that A, but again, with stamp jewelry, you can kind of get away from stuff. And you can see when I stack them, um, you can't see the first attempt at the A, which looked a lot like how it ended up anyways. But there you have it, says Matt, and again, we're going to darken that in a little while, but I'm going to put that off to the side right now so that I can do the last one. And the last one is going to say Lacey. Put that right there, that's my biggest copper circle. And that means that I'm going to keep the A out, but I need to find the rest of the letters. Do, do, do. L. Here's the E. Here's the C. And there's the Y. Okay. Now, 
If you want to be able to see in the copper better the same way you can with the silver, just because it's really hard to see the actual letters when you're doing this, what you can do is you can start out and you can take your um, polishing pad, which this one's very clean, but as you can sort of see by my fingers, a lot of this copper leaves an oxidizing thing, so after a while these will look pretty crappy, but this is a brand new one. Anyway, you can um, just give this a little rub right where you want to stamp. There. And you can see that that's going to, uh, oh, that's what came off. You can actually see the reflection a lot clearer. Do you see that versus up here, fuzzy, clear? So that can help you, especially when you're doing letters and you want to make them as even as possible. So let's see. The C is going to be right there. A, L. So I'll put the L up here. Oh, I did. Oh, well, that's okay. I wasn't supposed to do four. I was in silver mode, but that L looks okay. It's a little bit deep up top, but it's kind of nice in this tutorial that I'm messing up so much so that you guys can see exactly what not to do. All right, let's see if we can make this A cooperate for once. Eh. I don't know. Apparently my A's are off. Oh, are you serious? Hold on. Excuse me while I bump the camera. There we go. Let me see. Can you guys see that? Let me hold that up a little bit. Lazy. And so stacked, we have Mickey, Matt, and Lacey. Like that, kind of. You get the general idea. Okay, so now we want to fill that in because it's kind of hard to see unless you're looking at it from a certain light. So we're going to take regular old Sharpie and we're gonna color right on top of the stamp. Let's see, I can move the block now. We're gonna color right on top of the stamped area. I'm really kind of push the Sharpie down so that there we go. So that it gets into all the little cracks. And I'm not going to sharpie up here because I didn't really want that to be there. And it's going to keep it from being that visible. But I am going to sharpie in Matt's name down here. And Lacey's. Whatever. Okay, give that just a second to dry. Mickey's is probably dry enough. We're going to polish that with that jewelry polishing pad. The reason that I give it a second to dry is that when the Sharpie ink is still kind of wet, it's just sort of sticky and it smears and it doesn't come off as nicely. So it's good to let it air dry for a second and sort of um, harden up. Okay. And you just want to hold that down and kind of push off. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. And your copper will get a lot lighter as you do this. Huh. That's interesting. I did not get the Sharpie in very much in the bottom part of that Mickey. Can you see that? It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to just do it one more time. Really, really push it in there. But I think that that circle is not as deep as I thought it was. So that's kind of a bummer. We'll see if that'll come out okay or if I have to redo it. 
not the end of the world if you have to redo it. It's just that then you've used up a stamping blank for no reason. Which is kind of a bummer. Okay, Matt's name turned out very nice. Even with that A that's kind of floating around out there. Sort of get my fingerprints off, which is hard because I have to hold it down. But, but I'm not touching it. To Macy's name. You want to keep kind of moving this around too because this pad will get used up. And after a while it'll stop pulling the ink off. The nice thing about these pads is that as you wear it, your jewelry is going to oxidize. The copper is going to tarnish just like a penny would. And you can just give it a quick rub with these pads when you're wearing it. And it'll buff it right back up so that it looks brand new again. So I keep a couple of these um, with my jewelry so that I can sort of do touch-ups. Alright, let's see how Mickey turned out. Come on, little guy. Mm, still kind of light. Let me see, I can't, can't tell until all the ink's off if I'm going to leave it. Because again, I do like that hand-stamped look. I'm trying to make sure that you can tell what that is. Let's see. Or Pebbles is watching this going, I mean, you're not going to redo it. Eh, see, I don't, I don't think it's actually that bad. I think it's a little light. But you can tell, right? I think so. You think? I think it's okay. It's just not quite as even as I would have wanted it. Okay, so next we have to make these into pendants by adding a hole. I'm going to use this. It's a hole punch um, specifically for stamping blanks. And I'm just going to punch out pretty close to the edge. Um, and you can see in the reflection exactly where it's going to be. And I want this to have Mickey hanging as straight as possible. Let's see. But I also don't want it in the middle of my blank. Is that good? Let me think. So if that was hanging like that, would that be good? Maybe a little over? Okay. There you go. Sometimes you gotta just commit. Uh, sort of work that off. This gets stuck on there like that. You gotta kinda muscle it off sometimes. But be careful because you don't wanna bend that blank. Okay. And there you'll see my hole. And that's about as far away as I want the hole to be from the edge on the other pieces too. So I need to keep that right there so that I can look at it as a guide. Now we're going to put it on a jump ring. And I forgot to mention that it's easier if you have jewelry pliers at this point to put it on the jump ring. I have seen people do it and they don't have jewelry pliers and they just pull those little jump rings apart with their own fingers. You can totally do that. Um, I think that's a real pain. And I was lucky enough to have jewelry pliers when I did this for the first time. So I didn't have to deal with it. So... If you don't know what I'm talking about, this is a jump ring. Play the old please focus video camera game again. You gonna focus? Maybe? What if I block everything else? There we go. That's a jump ring. You can see my hands are kind of icky looking from the copper. Um, and I'm going to use a pair of jewelry pliers to just open that right up. There we 
we go. So glad that that was completely out of focus that whole time. Super awesome. Come on, camera, work with me. Really? You're really not going to refocus? Oh, what a pain. Okay. So once you've got the jump ring open, which hopefully you can kind of see, even though my camera is refusing to cooperate, um, start with the largest circle and just pop that right on there. This is always fun because then you can really see what the necklace is going to look like. And we have an almost finished product. So it's going to hang like that. See, Mickey, Matt, and Lacey. Just close that on up. Okay. Mm, something else that I forgot to mention is that it's also a good idea to have a pair of, oh, I hope I have them, there we go, of cutting, of wire cutters, because we are also going to cut the chain. I buy my chains and my little connector thingies, well, ball chains and little alligator connector things in bulk. So this is always much longer than I need it to be. And I actually just wrap it around my own neck and then find a good spot. So I'm not going to move the camera to show. I'm sure you can imagine me putting this on my own neck. Okay, so according to my neck, this is a good spot. Get wire cutters. Let's put those right in there. And that's the length that I need. need to get a little closure thing out as well. part you just pop the ends of the ball chain in like that thread it on through close it on up ah there we go and voila you have made that necklace and so, like I said, you can um, just practice a lot and get better. And I have other stamps, too. I have a bird stamp and some heart stamps. So I've done other things besides um, Mickey's, and it's been really nice. It's a really sweet way to do a personalized holiday or birthday gift. Um, I've even done some necklaces that say things like, you know, I love you, or you're one of my favorite people, or stuff like that for people just because um, these are, like I said, pretty expensive to make and they ship really well. So it's been fun. The only hard thing is just making sure that you stay practiced so that your stuff can um, be lined up when you go to stamp. And then just, you know, getting all the equipment out and actually sitting down to do it, which I haven't done in forever. So this was kind of fun. Anyway, thanks for following along. And if you actually make one yourself, I'd love to see a photo. So just leave it on my Facebook wall. All right, thanks.